Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. Like a team of Reinhold Mesners, Dorking Wanderers have made it to the summit. They sit atop the National League South table, peering down at those below with a swagger in their eye, a glint in their smile, a toothy step as they march through the season, winning game after game after game. Indeed, Wanderers have won seven games in a row. Their form is such that supporters of their last opponents, Dulwich Hamlet, claim to have borne witness to a performance from the future champions. This week's opponents, however, will have none of that talk, for the visiting team is Ebbsfleet United, the club directly below Dorking in the National League South table. They themselves are undefeated in five, so there is a certain tension in the air as the volunteers of Dorking prepare Meadowbank. A large crowd is expected and a good performance is required. Fortunately, Wanderers have a man at the helm who laughs in the face of fear and tells it in his own inimitable way to fuck off. Is that the piss? Okay. <laughs> Kids know your limits. Arlock can't wait. Wait, Arlock literally can't wait. They're all in there, mate. Literally, like they, 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 I'm gonna. It's one of those. Like, it's, you don't need to say nothing. Oh, beardy, go on, son. It's a massive game. Do you know what I mean? These are the games they want to see. Um, it's gonna be packed today, which is great. Uh, already kids and stuff in the high street with their shirts on. For us, it's just all part of the journey, really, the project, really. It's uh, in terms of the, the facts of the matter, it's barely halfway through the league. It won't be season defining, but it's a good one to win. They're a big club. Um, they're a big club and, uh, you know, only just been relegated um, from the National League. Uh, good resources behind them, um, like we have, uh, to be fair. Um, they're full time, unlike us. Um, and it's, I just think it's going to be a great game of football. I just feel like the main aim in these games is just don't bottle it. When you see kids out in the street wearing your football club shirt, like, that would blow my mind. I don't think I'd ever get used to that. I think I'd always get a kick out of that. Do you still get a kick out of it when you see it from like, I started this club? Yeah, not a personal kick, to be honest. I just, just, just the sort of. Um, everything that's gone before it really and all the people that have been involved I just think about you know the amount of people that have been involved uh, you know I started it and I'm still here but there's been a lot of people along the way that have given their blood and sweat to, to help us be where we are so I kind of I, I genuinely feel like it, um, it you know it's recognition for all of those people the people here today currently and everything we've done uh, it's a project and you know it, it's definitely a, a, a pinch yourself moment um, if I thought about it too long, I'd probably fucking break down in tears and then my half man image would be absolutely fucked and my players wouldn't believe me when I say don't wear gloves, right? <laughs> so, do you know what I mean? But it is, it's pretty special, but it's, 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 it's recognition of the whole project, you know? At the moment, you've got all the answers, 100%. Yeah, 100%. No matter who plays, that's the bottom line. So my job's a steering job. So what the coaches have worked hard on is just going to just to try and give you a couple of things just to consider today. The rest is um, down to you just to do what you're doing, OK? Because luckily at the moment for you and us, we've got that one thing that, that can't be replicated, which is our, our work rate and tenacity all over the park is very good. And that's hard for teams to deal with. So that's the bit we've got to bring. That's the bit we've got to bring. And you can plan a game as much as you want, but if you're that player and after two minutes, you're getting throttled by the way we play in terms of the tenacity, right, all that goes out the window. I'm hoping, and I think, that they probably overplanned this one. We ain't gonna do anything else except what we do. And the final thing is, they wanna play narrow, okay? So it's quite strange. They play 3-5-2, looking inside rather than outside. So the midfielders quite often are looking to thread the, get on the ball in pockets. They almost play a 3-5-2, like, like modern teams play a 4-2-3-1. They get balls in them little areas and just thread little passes. Out of their goals scored, Beardy does it all. 
I think are about 60% are slide passes, narrow passes, or boys running with the ball, taking people on, score a goal. Centre midfield. Centre midfield is their danger. The only instruction I'm going to give you, so they have an overload. So if they play 3-5-2, now, I don't know what they're going to do. I'm not going to over-talk them, but I just want to make sure you get the bits that could happen. They've been playing the ex charlton plan. Chris Solly there, he's, he's small. But his distribution is really, really good. So he goes in the box every time they get the ball. They split. He always finds one of these two. Or what some stupid teams in our league do is they overcommit players and, and, and then this Solly just pops it in here. So today, you three, Old Acre, Nile and Josh, do not leave, where are you? Fuck me. Don't leave your men. Don't overpress the ball. We're now just thinking, we are going to score goals. We're going to have our time in the sun during this game. And we ain't trying to overchase the game in them areas. And we're compact. I thought the covering round and defending at Dulwich was fucking excellent. Better than we realised. That's why they couldn't get a sniff. So that's it. Literally, when, when we come back in before the game, I'll have very minimal say so. I don't need to build this game up one bit. All you've got to do, basically, is what you've been doing. It's that fucking simple. Okay? Good. Let's go, boys. Go Make sure we stop fucking about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, no, we're fucking laughing and joking here, right? We, I know we've had our fun. Yeah, yeah, no, we're a fucking match play now. Let's get our reds on this, yeah? Come on. Hey? Okay. We, I guess one of those. We've got to make sure they're prepared, but not overthink what's going on. Mm. We don't want to be worried about how we're going to get in their heads. They want to be thinking about destroying them. Show them how it's done today, DJ. Show them your fucking ass, mate. Literally. Mm. Nicky, must get them high. You want to receive the ball high, mate, OK? Cheese, really alert, really switched on. You're one-on-one -on -one defending today, OK? Yeah. They've got a front three, OK? Yeah, okay. Alfie, you know what to do, yeah? yeah, yeah. Off the shoulders the whole time. Yeah. Give Alfie loads of information, OK? Press like you do, mate. You've, yeah. you've been unbelievable, mate, OK? Briggsy is obviously the fucking match winner. Check his <laughs> Always. Yeah, he's actually very, he's actually yeah. Thing is, you haven't really seen it yet, right? Like, when you get a game down here in the second half, like in the 80th minute, he turns up. Fucked. Yeah, fucked. And he's still doing it. And you're like, mate, he's still doing it. All good, mate. So this is all about letting them know when you played here last time and Bobby was marking you and then like they, you know, you changed their mind early bells, you know what I'm saying? This is all about making them realise it's a tough game. Have a blistering start. Win the game by half time, Briggsy. Big crowds? Yeah. Yep. He's a big one today, isn't it? Well, yeah. I just heard that the uh, car parks fill up. Oh, good. That's the local authority happy. We did tell them. Field of Dreams, build the stadium, people will come. So many kids and that, it's unbelievable. Kids and dads, don't get any better than that. Cheaper football, on their doorstep, more entertaining, closer to the action. Get home by 5.30. Yeah. <laughs> Ticks all the boxes, doesn't it? it does. No, it's a centre of town location, so it's great really, do you know what I mean? So, no, to be fair, mate, like I said, it's an opportunity to play in front of the, uh, the crowds. We've got a few quiet boys today, which is interesting. Quiet? Yeah. Yeah, quiet means either either absolutely ready to go or not tuned in. So <laughs> it's a bit of an extreme, to be fair, that one. Always. So do you keep an eye on them for the first few minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already had, a, you know, Alfie and Nada thought were a bit quiet, but they've been our best two players. So I'm sure they're just focused, ready to go. I think they are as a team. I think as a team, they're ab like a coiled fucking spring. I mean... <laughs> You know, so, and the thing is, right, bottom line is, you could be playing anyone today. You could be playing a team, I mean, next week we've got Bill Ricky, um, who've made loads of signings uh, in great form. So you can't over talk these games or you lose the plot, you know what I mean? But the bar, the fans own bar, is absolutely round with the is it? fans. Is it, yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, mate. Oh, no, right. Bucks, yeah. Stay, mate. All the Cheers, best, mate. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Yeah. If I get it wrong, get in the dugout. <laughs> I never ask you if you get nervous here, you always say no. And no, never. I'm more nervous about the T-bar Q being long, genuinely. So, you can't odds football, I've been there, done it, right? You've had your best 11 players out and got beat 5-0, and you've had dog and duck side, you know, and, and you win. So, you, can only, you, can't, you can only affect the process, can't you? You can't do anything more. I mean, listen, I don't get nervous, but I always want it to start, because I'm fucking, I want to win. 
and the sooner we can win the better. That's what I think. I just think the sooner we can win and I can get a soft and batter on the way home, the fucking better. <laughs> But you, you must have some emotional response to looking out for this. You must get a bit of a buzz. No, honestly, I'm in game mode. I will if we if we have when we have success with it. So on them years when we have success with it, it's a big like truckload of emotion all in one go. Because it's like another big chapter. But until then, never. Because you just you just learn over the years. There's too many twists and turns. So you can't odds it. You can't odds anything. You don't know what's going to happen next. You've got to be really focused. Obviously, we've got to, you know, wind ourselves up here, though, right? There's no given right. There's no given right that Josh and Nard and Foggy are going to do the work they've done the other night. They will, right? The referee is going to be honest, which I like. He's going to do all the shit bookings. Listen to me. Is that one of our lot talking? Did the door shut? What's, I'll just wind up the ref. Ref, what time are we starting? What? Right, keep listening to me, lads, yeah? The referee, one million percent, is gonna wanna be your best mate, right? You need to listen to me. He's told me, I give, he said to me, you'll be pleased to know I give the shit bookings. This is all about our pace and energy. I've got a, fa listen to me. I've got a feeling that their back three are gonna be wide open when we put the ball in them areas. Remember, haven't. That's why we was 5 0 up at half time. So, really good discipline. No early yellows, okay? If they chuck it long and direct, um, and we want Ed to come and clear it out, and DJ just get right off him, drop right off, we've got a lot of pace. So, go and strangle them with that fucking pace. Literally, play at your pace. This lot are gonna be fucking window shopping for five minutes, because they know we're good. So make sure you start the way in their heads they've been told you're gonna, and then all of a sudden their confidence goes back a couple of furlongs. All right, boys, fast start, come on. The following takes place between 3 p.m. and 3.04 p.m. Events occur in real time. <laughs> Yes, there is a fucking drummer. That's your left one. So we got three, huh? Press! Time! It's rare for a side to come to Meadow Bank and employ the same 3 5 2 system as Dorking. So for Ebb's fleet to do that, while being the second place team in the league, makes for one of the most intriguing matchups of the season and the opening forays into enemy territory promise a game of basketball-like excitement. Jordan! Jordan! coaching team are expecting the Ebb's fleet attack to be narrow and into pockets, but a move down the right-hand side opens the Wanderers up and gives Dominic Polion a glorious opportunity. Oh, 
Poli on his surprise to see Barry Fuller block his shot, but not as shocked as Alfie Egan on the follow-up. This season, Barry Fuller has cleared more lines than Boris Johnson in a lockdown party. The Ebbsfleet's fans, meanwhile, are abusing the linesman, even though he got it exactly right. Oh, come on, that drumming isn't even rhythmic. You're just hitting it randomly. DJ, get it! DJ! With Jason Pryor out for the foreseeable, Wes Fogden is playing in an advanced role behind Alfie Rutherford, and he might need to brush up on his short-range shooting. Win it, win it! That's a booking, no? Good referee! A late challenge by Sefar Karaman leads to the first booking of the game. This is down, keeper's left, bottom corner. Fuck me. Fuck it! Fuck it! Dorking are pressing high up and forcing Ebb's fleet to go shallow with their goal kicks. Keep them there, keep them there! No, And even though Wanderers are having success in turning the ball over, Mark is considering a switch in order to find more solidity at the back. Have a look at what um, that 4 or 5 1 at half time. Have a look what it looks like against that formation. Shoring up the back might be essential with the way Dominic Polion is playing. Jordan, brother! Jordan! He's not the only one providing a threat. Dorking's wide men are looking to pepper the box with crosses. Time! Time! Deliver! This side! 16 minutes into the game and Dorking are looking comfortable on the ball. For the first time today, they have their opponents pegged back into their own half. Keep playing! This side! This side! Jordan! Yeah, so forget last step a bit. Last step a bit. Former Wolfsburg defender Car Raman makes the ungodly mistake of waving a leg at a full speed Matt Briggs. And once again, Dorking's opponents are down to 10 men. And further still, like a narrator whose fiance just walked in during voiceover recording to ask a question about a washing machine, Dennis Kutrieb has lost his call. <laughs> One day, someone will score a free kick on this show. But it is not this day. In the With the red card taking a chunk out of their defence, Ebbsfleet have yet to find their new shape, and Dorking are looking to capitalise. In the box! To be fair, it's, it's a brilliant end product at the moment, isn't it? It's all end product and then a couple of bad habits we're playing inside when we just got to get on the outside. Something that has bemused us about this game is why did this guy's dodgy lino chant not get more traction? Dodgy lino! Off you go, off you go, off you go! Dodgy lino! Alfie, Alfie, tell Alfie! Dodgy lino! Dodgy lino! Nothing in the box. Not content with denigrating the assistant referee, the fan is now demanding that somebody be sent off. We're not sure who, but somebody. Anyway, back on the pitch, Matt Briggs is about to do what Matt Briggs does. Get out of his way, Alfie! Alfie, get out of his way! Yeah! Oh, that is 
Show me what a 4-5-1 looks like against their formation. They may be up against 10 men and Briggs may have given them the lead, but the Dorking coaching team are still working on finding the optimum system. Against the 4-5-1? No. How are they playing? 4-4-1? They're playing 4-4-1. But as you said, narrow. Who, theirs? Yeah. Mark's biggest concern is the aerial prowess of Elliot Romain, who is choosing to go up against the significantly shorter Barry Fuller. This one here, this side, Romain on Fuller is their target, OK? They've done it two, three times. Turn out! DJ, stay so, Relax, you got nothing, relax, relax. Other side, other side. Good shot, Nicky. Keep it, DJ, keep it. Just keep it. Shake, get your shake! And! No, Shake! Right, right, right. This side! Niall! Simple! Do that! Get it, Niall! No, Niall! 2v1 out wide! Run him, run him, run him, run him! Run him! Run him! Keep running! Keep him locked in! Man up! Other side, other side! Other side! Nicky, Nicky, have a look at the game! Nicky, watch the game! Jordan, switch on to the full way! On the stroke of half time, the Epps Fleet supporter near our microphone appears to have downed his coffee. Go, 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 go! Get it back! Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! I'm not going to do it right just yet. I'm not going to do it just yet. All right. Come in, Maka, come in. Get, get the others in. Get the others in. Cheers, love. Service. Yeah. Cheers, good off, mate. Well done. Good off, lad. Well done. Well done. We all in. Are the subs here? Yeah, yeah. subs are in there out there, mate. <clears throat> right, in case I forget. Uh, good job. You're coming round on Romain now. When they go long, and, and, and he's coming round, because he's got too many inches on Baz. Where's Baz? So that's... You need to all tune into me, yeah? OK? Um, I'm just saying there, he's got a foot on you. So for me, that's, uh, that's an easy one. Come round, drop off. To, I'm going to give you the dangers. Cut that out, OK? Balls into them pockets, right? You've done a couple. Don't get bored, DJ, because you're such a beautiful footballer. The idea is it's like it's spa, 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 sideways, sideways, out to Nicky, get it back, left back tucks in, open out, pass, pass, Briggs, goal, right? We've got to be patient. It's a game now, please listen to me, to go sideways. For me, Josh, you're going a little bit too narrow in terms of your running. You should be, get the ball, gain a yard or two. Same with you, now. Get the ball, gain a yard, get it out wide. Because we, we need to pepper the box, pepper the box with balls into the box. OK? All right? Listen, it's been a great half. We've used the ball well. Everything now is insurance play. OK? Keep the ball. Hold up play is touch, set. Never, ever try and run into other opposition players, right? Just turn around, give it your mate. It's literally, they are, it's a training match for a team like us, the way we play. So all they can hope is that we get bored or we give them a shit free kick or something like that, right? So we're gonna have moments we've got to deal with this half. Okay, that's standard. But it's one more goal from being a win, right? But we've got to play very business-like, okay? Don't slow it down to the point where it's an easy low block and it's, and, and it's a low block, and it's a block that is like, you know, if you slow it down too much, then the back four for them looks like that, looks like that. All the time the back four's like that, if we, if when we slow it down, is when we're gonna struggle, and that's when we have to start looking for little pockets, and that's when the Knicks appear. We're one nil up, it's match play. We've gotta be ruthless. We mark, we win the ball back like we have been, and when we get the ball, 
We try and look for them quick forward passes. We're actually way more dangerous when we recycle the ball than we are with the ball, because obviously they're out of shape, and that's what's happened. They're going to be tired, aren't they? There's no way they can keep defending like that. No way. It's impossible. But you've got to keep them working. And don't do little things. Like you gave Ch uh, uh, DJ a ball up here. 3G pitch, fucking bang. I, I'm, an, I'm an insurance player. I'm like, touch, play. Everything right, everything right. Okay? Right, boys? When you see full on the overlap, it's bodies in the box. That's what it is. It's lock up, lock up the game. All right? You should just lock it up the whole time. Nile and Josh just pick up. You've got to make sure now you're a lot more penetrative. That's that the word? Yeah. yeah? Cheers, Bob. <laughs> 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 Fuck me. Get another goal, we're going to get three points. Right? We're going to score another goal in this game for sure. Okay? So we lock up the game. Great defended. Great defended. Come on. I've gone to a three, haven't I? Oh no, four. Three. Four. I mean, it's a three, mate. That's a three, mate. Oh, oh, there he is. Fucking, I just saw him too. Yeah. Free. Yeah. <coughs> Ebb's fleet have made a change, and the Dorking bench are trying to count the defenders as they figure out what they're up against. Also, we're going to have to mute that maniac next to our microphone after this bit. Yep, that's enough out of you. Out of you in, boys. Fucking hell, boys. Mate, fucking hell, what a shit start. The ever lively Dominic Polion very nearly shocks Dorking right at the start of the half. Fucking sat nav. Jordan Cheadle's cross is easily cut out, and it leads to the kind of counter attack that drives Mark as crazy as this narrator when I realise my fiance has now turned the washing machine on while I'm recording. Cheeks! Cheeks! Look up! Hey, Ed, that's Look the up! Ed. Mark blames Cheeds for Ed Harris taking a yellow card, and I blame my fiance for having to record this at 1 a.m. Ebb's fleet, meanwhile, have found a shape that's causing Dorking some problems. When Ben Chapman gives the ball away, he attempts to redeem himself by raking his studs down Matt Briggs' calf. Someone in the crowd genuinely did just say he got the ball. As the away side starts to go long, Dorking string together more passes than a drunk Kevin Spacey. We're definitely biased here, but uh, cheating, really? <laughs> the United keeper does well to deny Briggs, but Wes Fogden's close range finishing is back on the menu. Right, listen. Niles going left, listen to me, listen. Niles going left and Briggsy, they now go and press their back three. They've got a three, okay? Simple as that, okay, yeah? Three in midfield, I think you'll get loads of the ball. But Briggsy, you can now push on. Brilliant, DJ! The introduction of James McShane and a shift in shape allows Matt Briggs the freedom of the right wing, and that's an ominous development for Ebb's fleet. Yeah, Alfie's, a set, Alfie's on him now. Walking a pressing hard, and even former Cholton legend Chris Solly, who I once sang is better than John Terry, despite being only five foot three, is beginning to struggle. Don't shoot, no, I'll pass it. Oh, 
Matt Briggs fires into the corner once again, and Dorking's lead is surely unassailable. Dorking have finally broken the Ebbsfleet spirit and what was once an exciting basketball game has turned into a Harlem Globetrotters exhibition match. It seems that even when a defender knows exactly what Matt Briggs is going to do, because he's done it twice already, he still can't stop him. Let's go! Baz, be fucking ruthless! Briggsy, oh, fucking come on, there's more in this! Ah, oh, Joshy. Dorking a three up, but the cushion won't protect the players from Mark, who is demanding they play at their highest possible level. Josh! Josh! Outside, man! An unlikely spell of pressure from Ebbsfleet leads to an even unlikelier outcome. Shit, goal. Craig Tanner chips the ball into the box and Adam Mechie loops a header over Dan Lincoln. Seriously, this is the worst percussion outfit outside of a primary school. 12. Hold on, Dino. 12. It's just fucking obnoxious. It might be because it's nearly 2 a.m. and I've been doing this for too long and because Claire turned on the washing machine and it slowed me down. But that drum is really getting on my nerves. Oh, and Rakish Bingham has twisted his ankle, putting that cross in, so Ebsleet are going down to nine men. I tell you what, I'm going to go to bed now. I should be a bit more upbeat in the morning. They're down to nine men now, yeah? Can we get another go? With just moments left to play, Dorking toy with the nine players left standing for Ebbsfleet and go searching for the fifth and final goal. James McShane threads in Alfie Rutherford, and as we used to say on the streets of Hawley, it's Toe Punt City Mean Gene. Oh, come on, Macca, get one, Macca. Oh. Get in there. Well done, boys. Well done, boys. Fucking love that. Different gear. Shit, mate. See you soon, mate. Shit, mate. Chill out, mate. Ten men, no game though, is it? You said 4 0, Gareth. Right, good. OK, listen. Very difficult one to critique, that one. I thought, we'd, I thought we dropped off a bit today, if I'm honest, as a team. Um, I think we need to understand that um, what a great run, and sometimes when you're on a great run, the momentum keeps the run going. But the performances individually and, and the mental stuff is what catches up with you. Because sometimes you keep winning just because you're winning and because you've got players that are in form and confident. And that's a masterclass from Briggs in finishing, make no mistake, right? But he's cleared two off the line. OK, I thought that's the worst we've been in centre mid today, all season for me. I mean, I'm not, I thought, used to, for me, what you've got to realise is when you play the better sides, it's watch what's going on, understand your role on the pitch, and just, you know, you've got to just be maybe 25% more defence minded, make sure you fucking find your man, do your bits. I thought at the back, we was, um, um, you know, we was OK. 
DJ, I thought you was our best midfielder, so probably a little bit more fitness. I'm just pushing you in the two on another day of the week, if I'm being fucking straight with you, mate, okay? But the way you played was unreal. And if you were on there for the last half an hour, we probably scored seven, eight goals, because that was the difference. And Josh, I'm watching you, mate, and I'm cool as I see it, because I fucking, what, what a player you are. But you're going in to get the ball, you haven't checked once what's going on. When you've got it, you've gone like that and bounced Sammy. I'm thinking, open the fuck out, son, because you're just going to give it here and here, we're going to score 25 goals today. So I just thought, don't get me wrong, listen, you two have been unbelievable. Right, OK, yeah. But I just thought, for me, at the last 25 minutes was a little bit lacklustre, a little bit mentally slow, had to be better. And that's why we started giving away shit foul. Their goal comes from shit foul. We gave away one just before that, a shit foul. And it's because we were just sort of like, no idea, no idea. All we had to be was just feeding into wingers, touch, pass. Up. It was a bit quiet for me. I'm just being honest with you. And we've played a team with 10 men. We've had 10 men for, for 65 minutes, OK? All right, boys? But if I give you an olive branch, maybe the scoreline done that to you. But I was on the side, and if I could have got on top of them and ground and pound them for you, I would have done. And I thought you didn't ground and pound them like you could have done, in my opinion. The positives are... Great players in form. I remember years ago when we won the league and then every time the main striker, little fucker Tulf, and when he was injured, yeah, we'd, uh, we'd just put Briggsy fucking high and he'd he, he just score three a game. Was, and I said, did I, I said that before the game, did I, I literally said before the game, remember them days? Do that today. So listen, that's my constructive part. Five goals at home in front of the fans. We played some great stuff. We did play some great stuff and we've done lots of good things. As an 11, they've improved a lot as a team. I think they're a good team. And I think their shape's good. And they played that shape the day I watched you, didn't they? That, that 10 men shape was even good as well. Very clever way of doing it. Right, okay. So we had to adjust for that. There were a few, you know, they will think today weren't their day. They will think today weren't their day. Early red card, two off the line, right? I think they had a chance, didn't they? One on one in the first six, seven minutes. Am I right, yeah? Second half. No. First te five minutes of the game. Literally first, uh, there, there's a one-on-one. There's a one -on -one. Oh, yeah, Pazzi cut out. Oh, is that one of the clearances? 2v1, no, 2v1. No. He went to reverse it. That's it. If you are prepared to keep your standards at training, listen to the instructions and all that stuff, then we'll keep kicking on. But if you're not kicking on, that's the way for, if you're not kicking on every game, doing a little bit more, thinking more, doing more, and the opposition turn up, like Billy Ricky will next week, going, right, here we go, league leaders. That's when they come unstuck. I don't want to come unstuck. I want to put a fucking screwdriver in their gullet and say, we'll win 12 back to back. Bang, 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 done. Right? So I'm looking at the next problem. Okay, I ain't going to get nowhere blowing smoke. I'm looking at the next issue. And today, against a good side, a little bit ill-disciplined, marking-wise in midfield for me. Brilliance on the wing gets us the win. OK, and we got the three points against the title rival. That's what matters. Good stuff. Well done. Well done Management, just quick. Yeah. Uh, anyone got any extra thoughts other than what I said? I thought you were spot on. I thought we were mentally slow today. I think uh, not, you know, it's, it's, it's typical stuff. When people have had a lot of praise, and all we've done is blow smoke, right for the so to the midfielders. You know, it's, it's a, quite a natural thing that people switch off. I thought Barry, actually, was our most tuned in player. He seemed like he wanted it. Yeah. Um, he wanted to try and make the team tick. So listen, we can't moan 5-1, but we don't, we're not going to, you know, we have to make sure we're always on everything. So I wanted to make sure I give them a leveller in terms of, like, I don't think it was great. And we have genuinely saved two off the line. Yeah. Fucking left ourselves wide open a two on one. And we've had a man, they've had a man down. Yes, at the moment, everything's going our way. And that's why they've one sent off. It, it, that is how it goes in cycles. We, we had that first eight, nine games, right? And we'd have fallen on a barrel full of tips for to come up sucking our thumb, mate. It all went the wrong way. It all went the wrong way for us. That's how it worked. And now we're getting the rubber of the green a little bit. So I want to make sure, I don't, we're not going to survive on that. The rubber of the green goes. Yeah. We've got to make sure that we're doing things fucking right. Right, I've got to go and see people. Take the credit. It's in a bit. <laughs> I didn't want to be overly not nice, um, but obviously you're only ever managing the standards, really, and, and also you've got a you've got a sort of um, critique it accurately. They had two, two we, we Baz cleared one and a half off the line. We left ourselves a bit too wide open. They had a sending off, um, so you know it was an opportunity probably to remind them um, 
of their own standards and for one or two of them to go home and think they've not had a great game. Uh, Barry Fuller, captain and a right back. I get my first question really, I was think, I'm thinking this a lot when I'm editing, is your overlaps with Briggsy. How planned is that and how much is that has just come naturally? Uh, it's not so much planned, this is the way we play, the pattern that we've got. Obviously it creates an overload down that side and uh, it obviously exposes a lot of teams 2v1 when we can and obviously if it, Briggsy gets to slip me in, obviously I end up crossing. If they go with me, Briggsy does what he does, drives inside and puts it in the back of the net all the time. But yeah, it's not so much a plan, it is just the pattern that we play so we create an overload down the side and we do it as much as we can when we can. It's, it's kind of a tactic we've got. It's not, it's not a plan as in like in this situation we, we do the overlap. It's kind of, it comes naturally in the game and Barry will communicate what, where he is and where, what he wants me to do. He wants me to drive inside or he wants me to get at, like get at him. It, it just kind of works really. Like the experience of him playing behind me is incredible for me and it's, it makes my game a lot easier that I've got someone like that behind me kind of talking me through the game as such. But yeah, it just works. That's a lot of experience to have. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. <laughs> the old cliche, like the attackers don't really want to run back as much as you can, so we can create that overload. The likelihood is not many attackers will track me back all the way. So then obviously we expose that 2v1. You were just joking with Barks there yeah, yeah, about um, being and, and the red card. We were talking earlier about how interested we we're going to be to see these two teams with the same formation going up against each other. Is there any part of you that wanted to see how your players were going to deal with that? Or are you just like, don't no. give a fuck, I want it. No, I'd have rather them got fucking eight cent off. Yeah, obviously they showed that they were a great side. The first five, ten minutes, obviously we was on the back foot. They had a lot of the ball, they were creating uh, chances, they were penetrating in behind us quite a lot. And obviously the five, five, ten minutes of that was obviously a tough start for us. And obviously as the game went on, we started to get a little bit. It was, I think it was an open game for the first 15, 20 minutes. And obviously the sending off does change the game. But even at, with 10 men, they showed up what a good side they are. They're organised. They've got some good players that can open you up if you don't switch on. But we know we had to dig deep. And obviously as the gaffer drums into us, we're relentless. Don't matter what the score is, we keep going and we, we put them to the sword. But obviously they are a great side. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people will look forward to the game. Uh, later on in the season when we go there, as you say, the two top teams, 11 v 11, I think a lot of people would want to do it because they're a top side as well. I think they were really impressive. Um, the way they set up to, uh, at the start of the game, it was going to be a, they were basically wide open and we looked wide open and we spoke about it before the game. We've got to be really compact centrally. We've got players in there like Nard and Josh that their natural thing is to run off players on the ball players. Um, and today they had to be a bit more disciplined. The back three had to mark in a certain way. We weren't, listen, I just thought we could have done better. Our standards are really high, do you know what I mean? I thought we could have done better, but we've just won a game of football 5-1 and um, won a good run. And, uh, and we've also got something to work on still, which is good, which is really good. I started noticing that you get more comments on our social channels particularly on TikTok when you appear than anybody else and what's that to do with what where were you that that's created your profile where have you been uh been a long time obviously I'm old <laughs> so it's been a long time I've had a long career in the football league obviously I played over 500 football league games of Wimbledon for over five years Gillingham for six years Stevenage Barnet so and then I came through at Cholton so I've been around the block a little bit for it and been on the scene for a long time, so maybe that. What are you going to do if this club goes up? I don't know. I've briefly thought about it, but it totally depends on what the gaffer wants to do with regards to full time and how, how many hours he wants us in and how that's going to work, really. I wouldn't say it's more important, but the, the priorities aren't mainly as simple as football is everything or works everything it's kind of the mix and the, the, the balance that I get here is really good the, I mean the, the National South traveling wise is, is really is good especially when you compare it to for example the North and then the National Prem it's it's good <laughs> on the bright side big fuck mm. off crowd today and as you said in the dressing room you score five goals those people are going to come back and want to see more right yeah yeah exactly mate unbelievable the likes of Briggs that scored at trick and that, he was playing in front of 120. 
So we've, some of the players have been through the whole journey. So it's phenomenal, really. And, um, you know, we don't, really, we don't really sort of read into it too much because we're so tunnel vision on winning and we want to have a good season and there's a long way to go. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Uh, this week's comment of the week comes from Louis Evans, who said, I never thought I'd like Mark as much as Barks, but I've loved his team talks recently. We appreciate that, and we hear quite a bit of that, actually. We're glad to see that Mark's getting just as much love these days. And please tell that to Aski1, because he says he's only coming back when Barks and Mike return. And we'd like him back before then, although Barks and Mike will soon return.